Hey guys, how's it going? It's John from The Machine Shop. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to get an analog output from an Arduino. You ready? Let's go. Okay, first of all, let me show you this setup that I've got here. So, I've got my uh, Arduino up here um, connected to my NI MyDAC. That's going to act as an oscilloscope. Uh, my oscilloscope is a software-based one. That's this program here. So, this is going to show me what my output is of my Arduino. And, of course, we've got the Arduino software to be able to do some programming. So, uh, I've then got my, um, the my DAC here is plugged into the ground and one of the pins on the Arduino. So that's just going to act as an oscilloscope for now. Okay, so let's have a look at the code that we're going to be putting in here. To get an analog output from an Arduino, we're going to use a function called analog write. Um, first of all, we need to set up the pin, like we did in the digital one for controlling outputs. We need to set up the, our pin as the output. So, we're going to need pin mode in our setup. Now to do an analog output, not all of the pins on an Arduino is capable of doing this. Um, you can tell if it can because it'll have a little squiggly tilde line next to the pin number. Uh, so on the previous video we, when we were using digital write we were using pin 13. So we can't use pin 13 because it hasn't got the squiggly line but we can use pin 11 so that's the next one along. So I'm going to use pin 11 and I need to set that as an output. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this thing called analog write. So analog, capital W, write like that. It's got orange because it's recognized that it's a function. Okay, so then we need to say what pin we're going to do it on. So we want pin 11. <clears throat> and then we need to set it a value. Now this value can range between 0 and 255. If we set it to 0, then our output is going to be 0 volts. And if we set it to 255, it's going to be the output of whatever the USB voltage is. I'm using the Arduino Uno, which is connected by USB. So that's going to be just over 5 volts. So if I set that to 255, which is the maximum value we can put in there, close off my brackets and put a semicolon on there. And then if I ran this, it's going to compile the sketch and it's going to upload it to my Arduino Uno. Okay, yeah. That's how much memory it's used, blah, blah, blah. Done uploading, great. Now, if I move over to my oscilloscope here on the left, what I can do is I'll run my oscilloscope and I should get a nice output on here. Okay, and there we go. So now we can see that there is a very faint, probably just about see that green line on there. And that is my output from my Arduino at the moment. It's recording that as 5.182 volts. So that's the voltage that's coming out of pin 11. Now, if I was to set that to zero on my output, then what I should get is we'll see that the voltage on my oscilloscope here, it's going a bit wiggly because it's programming. And then there we go, so we've got a zero. Okay, so let's say if you wanted to have a voltage in the middle between zero and five volts, then you would expect to put in a value in between zero and 255, like 127, for example. Let's put that in and see what we get on our oscilloscope. So again, it's wiggly. Oh, here we go. Now, that is actually showing pulses. Okay, let me put a trigger on here. Uh, let's set my trigger level to one volt, that's fine. Great, and let me slow it down a little bit. Uh, let's go one millisecond. Okay, so what that's showing me is actually, it's going between zero volts and five volts, and then off again. We set our value halfway between 0 and 255, and that's actually coming on for half of the time and then off for half of the time, okay? What the Arduino is doing here is a thing called pulse width modulation. So what it's actually doing is the output is turning on for a certain amount of time and turning off for a certain amount of time. Depending on what value we set that analog write to depends on how long it's on for. So if we set it to 255, it's on 100% of the time. If we set it to zero, it's off for 100% of the time, or it's not on at all. If we set it to, say, 10 or 20, it's only on for a really short period of time, and then it's off. So you're probably thinking, well, that's not very analog. That just sounds like I'm outputting some pulses. But we can do something with that to condition the output. We can use something called a low-pass filter. Okay, so here's my setup here. I've got my uh, oscilloscope, my NI MyDAC, and I've got my Arduino. What I'm going to do is I've got a little breadboard here with a very small circuit on it. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'll draw out this circuit for you. Uh, essentially, we've got a pin here. This is pin 11. And the circuit's going to go through a resistor. 
and then it's going to go into a capacitor which is connected back down to ground on the Arduino. Okay, so then my oscilloscope, which is over on this side, it has the ground connected, which is what this brown wire is going to be here. So that's going to be ground. And then the top of the uh, capacitor here, that is now going to be our new output. I'm going to call that A0. Okay, so what's going to happen here is when this pulse, let me draw it out for you. Uh, let's do the pulses that we've got on here. So it's off, and then it's on, and then it's off again of equal amounts, so about 50%. Okay, like that. Grand. So what's going to happen is when we've got the circuit, when pin 11 is going to be on, this is essentially, uh, this is 0 volts, and then this is 5 volts. The blue line is pin 11, okay? So what's going to happen here is A0, or A0, whatever you want to call it, is basically the voltage which is on the capacitor. And what we're going to do is charge up the capacitor. So at this point here, we're going to, um, it's going to turn on, current is going to flow from pin 11 through the resistor and then start charging up the capacitor. So what we should get is the capacitor will charge up and then it will, uh, at this point we turn the circuit off so it's no longer charging. So it will slightly discharge. So it'll come down a little bit. But then we turn it back on again and it goes back up and we turn it off, and we turn it on, and it goes back up, and we turn it off, and we turn it on. And then eventually, it will smoothen out, and at this point here, will become DC. It will become an analog output. And this is halfway between our zero and five volts, so it makes 2.5 volts. Okay, let's plug it into our Arduino and see what actually happens. So, here I'm gonna take out my uh, signal wire, and I'm going to plug that into the top of the capacitor, into there. So that's my signal wire. So that's uh, this one here. And then I'm going to take my ground out of the Arduino. And I'm going to plug it into the blue ground line on my breadboard here. So everything on that blue line is now connected to ground. This green wire is now this ground uh, here that's going between the capacitor and the ground on the Arduino. So I'm going to plug that into there. And then this resistor needs to go between pin 11 and the top of the capacitor, and then which is then connected to A0. So that needs to be plugged into pin 11. Okay, so what we should now see is I need to change my... Let me go back to the screen. Here we go. So we've got everything set up here. So on my oscilloscope here, if I now change this to uh, turn the trigger off, we can now see that our DC voltage level has changed. And it's actually showing... Uh, 2.675 volts, so very close to 2.5 volts. All depends on what that input voltage is coming from the USB um, and what this is actually set to. So now I can set this value to whatever I want. So let's say a really low value like 20 and it program the Arduino and sure enough, there we go, my voltage drops. So you can see it wiggling just a little bit on the oscilloscope. That's basically where that capacitor is charging and discharging and it's not perfectly stable and there are better ways to clean that up as well, but it is filtering out and giving us a fairly good DC level. Now what I could do as well is on here, instead of just sending one value, I could vary what I do for this value. So what I can do here is I'm going to set up a for loop, okay? So if you want to see more about for loops, hit that subscribe button and I'll do a video just on for loops. So I'm going to set up an integer and I'm going to set that integer called i to zero. Then I'm going to set up a, a condition, so when i is less than 255, and then every time I want i, oh, same type of i, uh, to increment by five times. Now what this is basically going to do is, I need to put in another squirrely bracket, there we go, and then I'm also going to put in a delay of five milliseconds, grand. So what this is going to do, is it's going to start off by setting i to zero, then it's going to, every time it runs through this, it's going to run this bit of code as long as this statement is true. So currently i is zero, i is less than 255, so it's true, run the code. And what I'm going to do here is we've got analog right on pin 11, I'm going to set this value to equal i, okay? So the first time this runs round, it's actually going to send zero 
to the analog right, so it's not going to turn on our output, okay? And then it's going to delay for five milliseconds, and then it's going to run again as long as, and it'll keep running as long as this is true. Or stay in that sort of mini loop, and then once it's ran all this code, it's going to increment i by five. So then it's going to come around again. Five now, uh, i now equals five. That's less than two hundred and fifty-five. We're true. So now analog right pin eleven, i now equals five. So it's going to send five to that pin, and then delay, and it's going to run through that all the way until this equals. Uh, this is no longer true. So at some point, this will go to 255. 255 is not less than 255. It's equal to. Uh, so it will say, no, nope, can't do that. Um, don't run the code. So I can actually put uh, less than or equal to 255. So at least it will run 255. Okay, let's send this over and see what this does. Uh, let me go to my full desktop. Here we go. Okay, let's send this over and let's see what it does to our output. Okay, uploading, and we've got a bit of a wiggly line. So let's set a trigger on our oscilloscope. That looks pretty good. So what's actually happening here is the voltage. This is the, remember this is the voltage on the output of our capacitor. So now this for loop, every time it's increasing by five, it's sent increasing the voltage on the output till it gets to this point here. And what's happening is the code is once this has then gone right, this is no longer false. This for loop doesn't run and then it carries on running whatever else is in the code. Now there is nothing else, so it's going to come back around to the top and it's going to start again. When it starts again, it's going to set i to zero, so that's why it suddenly drops off here. Now the capacitor's not going to discharge too quickly, so that's why it's actually going down quite slowly, back down to zero, and it's not actually hitting zero, because by the time it's discharged down a bit, this curve has already started to increase. But we can see there that we've got a nice, simple analog output from our Arduino. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you liked this video. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Machine Shop UK. Also visit our website, themachineshop.uk, where you can find our online shop, all of the links to our videos, and any other tutorials that we've got on there as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon if you want a notification whenever I release a new video. And I will see you in the next Arduino video. See you later. Bye.